I am who I am because I'm born again. Your son looked just like you. Yes, he does. Just like you. Why? Because he has your DNA. He don't have no choice but to look like his daddy. It's in his DNA. He ain't got no control of it. It's in his DNA. That's who he is. He will always be your son. He'll always be your son. Even if he grow up and change his name, he'll still be Walt Jr. He'll always be Walt Jr. There's some things he gonna do without even thinking about it. Mannerisms. Yeah, he's going to walk a certain The way he walked, the way he talked, the way he carried himself. There are things that he's going to pick up from daddy that he ain't even going to try to pick up. It's just in his blood. Mm-hmm. No matter how close or far Amen. your relationship, mm-hmm. he'll always be your son. Talking to you about authority, you need to get this. Because a lot of y'all are in between. Sometimes you feel like you're a child of God. Sometimes you don't feel like. Sometimes you feel like God loves you. Sometimes you don't feel like. You got to get out of your feelings. Faith ain't got nothing to do with feelings. Faith ain't got nothing to do with emotions. Faith deals with truth. I am his son. He loves me. Regardless of how I feel, regardless of what's going on in my life, I am still his son. There will be times in walk life when he's going to make you so proud, you ain't going to know how to handle yourself. That's my boy. That's my boy right there. Yeah, you see him make that title? Yeah, you see him run that title? That's my boy. Yeah, that's my boy right there. Yeah, that, that's the boy right there. That's my boy. <laughs> There's going to be some times where he's going to show enough to make you mad. But he'll never not be your son. Right? Never. To the day he died, he'll be your son. When you come into the body of Christ, you are not voted into the body of Christ. You are not elected into the body of Christ. You are born into the body of Christ. You will be his child until the day you die. The Bible says nothing can separate you from the love of your God. Yes. Regardless of how I feel, I'm still his son. Yeah. Regardless of how I feel today, I'm still yeah. his son. I'm talking about authority. Yeah. I'm his son. I'm his son. Mm-hmm. You can't not make me his son. Life cannot make me his son. Pressure, stress cannot make me. There's going to be times in my life that I'm going to disappoint. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about God now. Mm-hmm. There's going to be some times in my life when I'm going to disappear. But I'm still going to be a son. There's going to be some times when I don't do everything exactly the way he wanted me to do it. But I'm still his son. And his love for me never changes. His love for me never wavers. He will always be my father. He will always care for me. He will always provide for me until the day that I die. And even after that, because when I leave this world, the Bible says, I have gone away to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. So even when I'm dead and gone from this natural world, I'm still going to be in his presence. He has still provided for me in this life after this. I will never not know him as my father. Never. Even when his body hit the ground with a thud, I'm still in his presence. Yes, sir. Authority has nothing to do with my past life, has nothing to do with my circumstances or what's going on. It is who he has made me to be. Amen. Bottom line, regardless of whether you like me or don't like me, it's who he has made me to be. I didn't make myself. He made me this. Right. He chose me. He loved me. He died for me. He established me as his son. He made me sit at his own right hand. I didn't do it. He did it for me. That's the poetry. It's not about me. 
If it was about me, I'd have lost a long time ago. If it was about me, I'd have been defeated a long time ago. It's not about me. It's what he has done for me. That's what the gospel is about. The gospel is about what Christ has done for us. Because we could not do it for ourselves. We were helpless. We could not deliver ourselves. So he did it for us. And regardless of how we might feel or what life may be saying to us at a particular time or particular place, we are still the beloved of God. We are still in his authority. I am in his authority. And the lowest place, listen to this, the lowest place in my life is still above Satan. No matter how raggedy I am as a believer, I'm still above you. Oh, yes. Jesus. No matter how messed up my situation is, no matter how bad I feel about myself, I'm still above my enemy. Yes, sir. Amen. Chris Rock. Was that Chris Rock? No, that wasn't Chris Rock. That's the comedian. Chris Brown. Look, oh. <laughs> I told y'all I'm 37. <laughs> Chris Brown sung a song and said, how you going to hate from the outside of the club? You can't even get in. <clears throat> Think about that. How you going to hate on me from the outside of the club? You can't even get in the club. You trying to throw rocks at me. You trying to talk about me. You trying to make me feel like I'm worthless. You trying to make me feel like I'm less than. You trying to make me feel like don't nobody love me like I ain't worth. You can't even get where I am. Amen. How Satan gonna make me feel less than when he can't even get where we are? Amen. He wish he could be you. He talking about you. He trying to pull you down. He trying to kill you. But he wish. That's what haters do. Haters talk about you because they wish they could be. They wish they could get where you were. You wish you could be. in the beloved. Yes. He loves me. Yes. He loves, he yes. loves. You've got to understand that. Yeah, I'm ragged. Yes. I'm ragged. Yes. I'm ragged. Yes. There ain't nothing you can tell me about me. No, all my issues. I know my issues. I know my, what the, um, Michael Epps said, ratchet. Ratchet. Mm -hmm. I know my ratchetness. You can't tell me about my ratchets. I know I'm ratchet. I know I got issues. I know I'm not perfect. I know I got a temper. I know I got an attitude. Yeah, I'm a preacher and I love God and I live for God, but I got an attitude issue. It's not easy for me to forgive. I like to hold on to grudges. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me. I got an anger problem. Sometimes I hold on to anger longer than I should. The Bible says don't go to sleep angry. I don't sleep many nights. Five eggs. Slept good. Yeah, slept good. Woke up angry. Woke up mad. I know the Bible says don't go to sleep angry, but I've, I've slept many nights hot. Spent many nights on the couch because I was hot. Yeah. <laughs> Love God and preaching the gospel. That's the attitude. Mm. 
get angry. Don't know how to let it go. Don't know how to forgive. But the Bible tells me, pray for those who mistreat you. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Let me read that in a different translation. Maybe, it means, maybe I'm missing something. Right. Maybe it says something else in the Greek. Maybe it says something else in the Greek. You know, maybe in another Bible it says it has a different connotation to it. But to love those, and I know you don't get me out, but I got to love you. Yes, mm. I got to love you. Not like I got to love you, and I know you're trying to hurt me. Trying to kill you. That's a hard pill to swallow. Now, some of y'all that might be, I'm talking, I'm talking my quarter full of pastor full. That's a hard pill for me to swallow when you tell me I got to love somebody that I know is trying to hurt me. Mm. I got to forgive you, and not only do I have to forgive you one time, but the Bible says if you do it to me seven times, I got to forgive you. That I got to keep forgiving you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. At what <laughs> when can I cut this nigga? <laughs> if I forgive him seven times, on the eighth time, can I stretch his eye? No! Can I kick him up? What can I do? No, you have to forgive him. You have to love him. The world don't understand that. And we struggle. I, I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about you. Now, you might not have an issue with that. I'm talking about court. We have to learn how to love people that purposely hurt us. You cannot have authority if you're holding grudges. Because ain't no telling what you're going to do. You might try to hurt me because you're mad. Bringing up some old stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So in order to walk in authority, you got to be mature enough to be offended and let that thing go so that you can keep walking with God. I ain't talking about the one that came to church today. I'm talking about the one that you left home. And anybody in here that's in a relationship, and I'm not just talking about marriage, I'm talking about in a relationship, because in any relationship, if it's going to be successful, you've got to learn how to forgive. If it's mother, daughter, you got to learn how to forgive. If it's co-worker, employee, you got to learn how to forgive. There is no relationship you will ever be in where you won't have to learn how to forgive. Because in order for anybody to have a right relationship, forgiveness has to be a part of that relationship. You have to learn how to forgive. Especially if you're going to walk in authority. Because if you can't walk in forgiveness, you can't walk in authority. Because I have to remain submitted unto Christ. The moment I stop being submitted unto Christ, the mo at that moment I stop walking in authority. Right. At that moment, you stop. That's it. I got to cut you off. Because I don't know what you're going to do now. Volatile. Yeah. I don't know what you're going to do now. I don't know what's going to come out your mouth. Because you hot. You angry. You hot. And when you're angry, ain't no telling what you're going to say at your mouth. So anybody who don't know how to control their anger, their mouth becomes a big weapon. And there's no telling what that person is going to say. The problem with words is, once you release them, you can't bring them back. You can say, I'm sorry, but it don't bring the word back. It don't bring the word back. Especially if you're in a relationship. Because you can say sorry and send flowers, and chocolate candy. Yeah. <laughs> but she's still holding on yes, right. to what you said. Glory. And we'll remind you. In this birthday. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 with intent and purpose, <laughs> and in the time and matter, remind you uh, of what you said or what you did. Uh, Just because you don't want to talk don't mean the argument is over. <laughs> she will bring that back to you, especially if it didn't finish the way she wanted to finish. <laughs> Put your hands together. Amen.
God has called us to walk in authority as believers. There is nothing that is going on in your life that you don't have authority over. You were born a conqueror. You were born victorious. Yes. Ain't nothing you can do about it. That's just who you are. What you have to do is renew your mind to the truth of God's word. Amen. And stop allowing life to pull you out of your character. Amen. Stop allowing your trials and tribulations and people to pull you out of your character. You are a believer. Yes. You have the victory. Amen. God loves you. He will never walk away from you. Now don't let nothing in your life pull you from your character. That's who you are. I was born that. I was born that. The Bible says he came down through 42 generations. Oh man, I love it. I love it. He said, I came down through 42 generations. In other words, he said, check my resume. Check my resume. Look at my history. My daddy was a champion. My great daddy was a champion. My great great granddaddy was a champion. When you look through my bloodline, ain't nothing in there but conquerors. So I ain't got no choice but to be a conqueror. That's just who I am. Yeah. Yes, life is rough. Yes, it's hard. But if you look through my bloodline, you won't see nothing but conquerors. You'll see people like David. You'll see people like Elijah. Yeah. You'll see people like Moses. You'll see people like Rahab. You, 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 you don't see no, no chumps. You don't see no weakness. You don't see no, 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 um, no, 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 um, Try to use good words. <laughs> Running out of good words. <laughs> you don't see no, you don't see nothing in my bloodline. Nothing but champions, conquerors, people who were pushed with their back against the wall and stood up and still got the job done. He said, "I got 42 generations of conquerors in my life." Yes. Now you think? Why would he wait till I come to give up? To stop. <clears throat> to stop being gone. If he did it for 42 generations, don't you know he'll do it for you too? Yeah. It's who you are. You ain't got a choice in the matter. When you was born again, you was born. You was made. I was born a fool. Yeah. I came here full. All I know is full. That's all I know. Amen. All my life, I, all I know is full. That's it. Can't be nothing but a full. I'm born into it. Raised in it. Don't know nothing but it. Same thing with Christ. I am born again. I am a Christian. And as I read the Bible and study the word, I am raised up in the faith. And I will walk according to the faith. I am in authority. I'm not going to allow this to hurt me, to overcome me. I have authority over me. You're not going to steal my praise. You're not going to steal my joy. I'm not going to lay in this bed and be this, um, depressed, be oppressed. I'm going to get up. I'm going to have my joy. I'm going to have my peace. I'm going to worship God. I've made up my mind. It's not about how I feel. I've made up my mind to worship you. I've made my mind. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will. My will ain't got nothing to do with how I feel. I will worship him. Money in the bank, no money. 